Hey, Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Atlanta Falcons today here on a Victory Monday, and not just any Victory Monday. We beat the Saints, baby, on the road, fourth quarter comeback. I mean, come on, we got to be a little excited, right? I know we're going to get into the good, the bad, and the ugly, so we're not going to let everybody, you know, off the hook here today on our, of course, reaction video uh, on Atlanta Falcons today, but they beat the Saints. Like, the Saints were 5-2 and two going into this football game. They just beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last week with the same quarterback, because I know a lot of people on Twitter were talking about, oh, Thomas, you know, it was Trevor Simeon, obviously not a really good quarterback. Stop. Trevor Simeon and this exact same Saints team last week in the Superdome beat up on the Bucks. okay? And so we can be excited. We should be excited. And the, Fal the Falcons are now 4-4. Four and four. Continues to go back to what I've been saying all year long is that the Falcons are very good on offense, at least good enough offensively. Defensively, they're... Very up and down. You know, each week you get what you get because there's not a lot of talent back there, but they're coaching their brains out right now and giving the Falcons opportunities to win every single week. I know that they blew the lead. I know that that's, you know, very Falcon-esque. We thought the Falcons were going to tank and lose, but in the end, he gave the ball back to Matt Ryan. There was a minute left, two timeouts. He made magic happen, young boy coup field goal, and, you know, game, set, match. We have to continue to at least acknowledge the fact the Falcons are winning football games that they would have lost each of the last couple of years. Do you remember last year? Because right, they were in these uh, in these situations a lot early, and they were all L's. Two years ago, in these situations early, and they were all L's. Yes, they're still in the situations where they can't seem to you know win a game comfortably, but at least they are winning the football games. So if you're upset today as a Falcon fan, I honestly don't know what to say to you because they uh, they beat the Saints, and we should be very, very excited about that. We'll start with this. Pin comment down below. Type we dat because, you know, that stupid who dat that they always say. The Saints are not that this year. I know that they're probably going to be a wild card team, but without a quarterback, and I don't think Tre Trevor Simeon is the answer, or Taysom Hill, or if they want to get Cam Newton, as I heard yesterday, who knows? Type we dat down below to troll the Saints fans because we absolutely cannot stand them. Just go down below during the ad break, uh, pin comment and answer, or it's really just type who dat. All right, I'll start with my big takeaways from week nine, and that, of course, is can we appreciate Matt Ryan like ever? Like, I'll let you guys in on a little uh, a little insight into my life. Sunday afternoons, I do the Atlanta Falcons postgame show uh, at a local station here called the Falcon Flyover. And so I take a lot of callers from Falcon fans, and most of you of them, of them yesterday were very positive. I still had people call in yesterday and say that Matt Ryan is the problem with the Falcons right now. Right after he did literally this, 23 of 30, 343 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, game-winning drive. Like, what more do you want from Matt Ryan? Like, 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 seriously, Matt Ryan is the reason we have four wins. If Matt Ryan was not on this football team right now, this would be a one-win to three-win football team at most. Now, I know that Matt Ryan's not been perfect this year. A couple of games, Washington fourth quarter, Bucks fourth quarter. You kind of went, Matt, what are you doing? But in the end, Matt Ryan is truly the reason why the Falcons even are close to four wins right now. And, as we'll talk about later, are in the playoff picture right now. Like, if the season ended today, they'd be in the postseason. This team is devoid of talent offensively on the offensive line. They have no running game. Yet, Matt Ryan is still able to score points against good defenses. Number one rushing defense yesterday, a top 10 defense overall. They have no, I mean, Lily has no defensive help because there's no pass rush. Uh, the secondary is very mediocre right now, and yet he has this team at 500. I think we have to at least acknowledge that he is playing so, so well. And if you're out there and you're a Matt Ryan hater, I honestly don't know what to tell you because you can't watch yesterday's game and hate on Matt Ryan because he played his butt off and won it yet again and has this team in a position to go ahead and make the postseason for the first time in a very, very long time. All right, before we go ahead and get into uh, the defense, because the defense was great for a little bit, and then they struggled, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel as this is going to be a playoff football team. I really believe that they are going to go ahead and possibly have a chance to make the postseason this year, which, of course, we'll cover here on the channel. So go down below uh, and hit that red subscribe button as we are trying to give you guys the best yeah, really, uh, Falcon content you could find. Because if you go to ESPN today, you watch Get Up or you watch Sports Center, very little talk about the Falcons today, whereas we're going to do it obviously almost every single day here, and it's all Falcons all the time. So go down below and subscribe. Uh, we would greatly appreciate that. All right, let's talk about the defense here. The defense was great for a little bit. Like, for three and a half quarters, they were really, really good. I mean, they had blanked the Saints in the first half, and this was a three-score ball game, literally because the offense kept scoring the football, and the defense was playing really, really well. I mean, we had a knowledge that A.J. Terrell was playing absolutely fantastic the entire day. However, we must also acknowledge that the defense is never going to be great. And so I know people want to see consistency on the defense, and I do too, but you are so, I mean, literally devoted talent on the entire defense from, uh, obviously, pass rush, the linebackers are very mediocre, the secondary is very mediocre, minus A.J. Terrell. Uh, I love Fabian Monroe did play well. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But this is always going to be an up-and-down defense because they're just not that talented. So you're never going to have this defense give you four quarters of absolute dominant football against a good football team like the Saints. The fact they were able to hold on for three and a half is good. I understand the frustration, the fact that they were very much breaking and giving the game away in the fourth quarter, and that needs to be fixed. But we can at least acknowledge they played very, very well against a very talented offense for at least three quarters of this football game and put the Falcons in a position to you know win the game. Because had you given up more points early on, you would 
have lost the game, and so we at least acknowledge that they played well enough to win. Who gets the game ball versus the Saints? Who do you think? I mean, for me, it's Matt Ryan. Obviously, it's Matt Ryan balled out, and he deserves the game ball. Maybe Cordell Patterson, who had over 150 yards receiving. Give me your thoughts on who deserves the game ball uh, down below right now in the comment section. Okay, um, can we just finally admit that the Falcons' run game is, like, really trash? Like, it, it, it genuinely is absolutely awful. And I, some people say it's because the offensive line can't block. I, I, I firmly believe it's because they don't have good running backs. And Patterson isn't really count in this graphic because he's doing more rece re receiving stuff anyway. But Mike Davis, 13 yards rushing yesterday. Like, Matt Ryan almost had more rushing yards. He was more of a factor running the football, let alone Mike Davis almost fumbling the, fumbling the game away there uh, on that final possession. I don't know why they ran the football when they were finally in field goal range, but they have got to figure out a way to at least get Mike Davis going or in the future bring in an actual legit running back because they are just so atrocious with running the football. And it, it goes to, again, to highlight the fact that Matt Ryan is playing with virtually without a run game. And he's done that without a running game for, what, the past three years? I mean, goodness gracious, it's just it's so so infuriating to watch happen. I mean, Mike Davis is, is just not it. He's just not that guy. And I know that we all want him to be to to be that guy, but he really is not that guy at all. And the fact that he is unable to run the football every single week is frustrating. I know that's the number one rush defense, and that's the Saints. They're really good at, against the run. I get that, but this is a this is a weekly occurrence. It's just compounded and expounded here when you play a good run defense. But even against bad run defenses, he's still not doing anything. And it's just like goodness gracious. Uh, come playoff time, cold weather, Falcons on the road, not in a dome. You need to be able to run the football, and right now they are completely unable to do so. I mean, maybe Arthur Smith can scheme it a little better, but. O-line, running backs, it's just not working. It's not working at all. Now, before we go ahead and get into my fourth takeaway, quick shout-out to our friends at BetUS. Go to chatsports.com, forward slash betfalcons, promo code FALCONS125. Get 125% deposit bonus whenever you first sign up uh, and bet on the Falcons, who, of course, did win yesterday if you did bet on them. Of course, I chose not to, and my bets were terrible last week. I had a really rough week. First off, Cincinnati looked terrible against the Browns. Like, what, what was that? That was a loss. Philadelphia had a chance to cover, but it was only plus two to plus two and a half, and so that one, that one went ahead and lost. I think the Packers did eventually win that bet because it was 13-7, to 7, right? And so it was minus 7.5, and, and so I think I did eventually win the Packer bet, but it was close. Patriots-Panthers, the over, that did not work out. I did win the under for the Broncos and Cowboys, so I kind of went 2-3 for three this week, but it's just a rough betting week. I gotta do better. I'm like, I'm like the Falcons running game this week. It was just not good. Not good at all. And so uh, if you want to follow my bets or not, you guys can jump into the betting game because even though I lost, I had a lot of fun. This week, as I always do, with our friends at BetUS. Chatsports.com forward slash BetFalcons. See the promo code on the screen, Falcons125. Get that 125% deposit bonus whenever you first sign up. All right, we got to at least mention the fact that AJ Terrell is balling out. I mean, he played lights out yesterday. He was fantastic in coverage. I know that there's no Michael Thomas. He's not necessarily a great receiver on the New Orleans Saints, but he, he's he been great, and he's had a really good second year. And we talked a little bit about him. He had a kind of an up-and-down game, uh, thinking back to the Bucks game, but he has been... He's been good, and this is something that you can at least lean on going forward is that he's probably going to be your best defensive player alongside Grady Jarrett in the future, and so you want to build around him and Grady so you need another cornerback on the opposite side, and you need another pass rusher, and something we've talked about a lot here on, here on the channel is that the, the, the secondary isn't terrible, but it's not that great, but Terrell is definitely the bright side uh, and the bright part of that. I thought, actually thought Fabian Monroe played really well yesterday. A couple of penalties that you kind of went, eh, don't really think that is a penalty, but he played well enough to win as well, and so credit to the entire Falcon secondary yesterday, but Terrell especially was absolutely fantastic. All right, final takeaway here. We do it every single week. We look at the playoff picture. Um, guys, uh, the Falcons are in the playoffs, like right now. They, if, if the season ended today, they would be your seventh seed as Carolina lost yesterday, as the Vikings lost yesterday, as Philadelphia lost yesterday. Like right now, it very much looks like the Falcons can be a five, or sorry, a six or a seven seed. And if they keep, you know, if they beat the Saints again, and the Saints keep struggling, you could be a six seed. And obviously a six seed has a much better chance of playing uh, a slightly worse team, although you're going to play, you know, either the Rams or the Cardinals or the, the, the Packers or the, uh, there's another team up there I'm blanking on right now. But you know, there's all those good football teams you see on your screen right now in the playoff picture. But this can very easily be a playoff football team. And even though people don't want to admit that, they want to, you know, get a high draft pick, the Falcons are very much looking at the playoffs. And Matt Ryan is very much looking at the playoffs. And we have to at least acknowledge that this is exciting because they have not been in the playoff picture at all each of the last couple of years. The fact that they're there right now is absolutely fantastic. As far as the next couple of weeks, going to get a very interesting matchup on the road against Dallas next week. A very interesting matchup as they travel to Jerry World to take on the Cowboys next week at 1 p.m. I think it'll be the Fox broadcast. It'll be a Troy Apin and a Joe Buck on that call. 
that's going to be great because you get a really good test. Dallas was blown out by the uh, Broncos at home last week or the, on Sunday, uh, but I think they're going to be a lot better than that. So a great test for the Falcons, especially defensively. Then you get kind of, you know, an interesting little uh, four-game stretch. Patriots, Jaguars, Bucks, Panthers. Like, we're going to learn a lot about uh, Atlanta. Sitting at 4-4, four and four. they win next week, though. I think a lot of the doubters are going to start kind of lean towards Atlanta being a playoff team, and that, to me, uh, is correct and absolutely good news. I'll finish with this. Is that the Falcons a playoff team? Do you think that they will be? If you think they will, type Y down below for yes. If you think they will not, go ahead and type N down below for no. I think that they will be, so I'll type Y at least for this week. All right, ultimate for today on our Atlanta Falcons uh, news and rumor reaction video. Falcons, big winners. We got to be let's excited a little bit here on a Monday, as I am, of course. Plenty more videos coming up later on this week, so make sure you guys are subscribed. But for Atlanta Falcons today, I'm Thomas Mott, signing off to the rest of your day.